Recently, we heard about some bees that decided to build a hive up in the eaves of a home. So we gathered up our bee suits to protect us, built some scaffolding, and started to bring in the equipment needed to remove the hive. Bees don't always pick the best place to build their hive, and this one was particularly high up. We had to get all the equipment up on the scaffolding to prepare for the removal. This is day two of the operation. Nick, the beekeeper, had gone in the day before and removed the brood, which is the honeycomb with the eggs. So today we were there to do the second phase, which was taking out the rest of the honeycomb, which contained honey. So first he had to cut out the stucco to reach the rest of the hive. In order to keep the bees from running to a different part of the eave, Nick is stuffing a blanket in to block their passage. The bees have been hard at work for six or seven years building this hive, and what you're looking at is the comb that they've built, which is filled with honey. So one of the first things that we do when removing bees is bring out a vacuum and vacuum the bees into a box, hoping to get the queen in the process. If you can get the queen in the box, the other bees will follow. So Nick is now cutting out the honeycomb, which is filled with honey, which you can see is dripping all over the place. This is a particularly sticky job. He's handing the comb down to his helpers who are going to vacuum off the bees that are on the comb. Again, a very sticky job. There were probably about 20,000 bees in this hive. Nick has figured out a way to tamp down the power of the vacuum so the bees have a pleasant trip from hive to hose to box. Once all the comb is removed, the contractor will come and repair the stucco and put insulation in to keep them from coming back. He'll also put in some stinky smelling stuff to keep the bees from coming back. All the comb has now been removed from the hive and as you can see the bees are all surrounding the box which indicates the queen has been caught and is in the box. I mentioned before that the honeycomb with the brood, which are the eggs, are treated differently than the honey. The honeycomb with the brood are cut and placed carefully into frames in the same direction that they were in the hive, and then they get rubber banded in to hold them in place. The rubber band eventually will fade away. Then those frames are put into a box like this, 10 frames per box, and they can be now moved to a better location. The comb with the honey can now be made into honey. I use the crush and strain method. I use a potato masher to first crush the comb and then take that and put it into a strainer of cheesecloth. I get the honey out and strain it one last time and then it's ready to be put into jars and labeled and enjoyed by all.